Why is change feared so much? Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. I want to talk about change. It's odd, is it not, that if you say, well, things are going to change, immediately there is a stillness. Oh, no. Don't change anything. <laughs> We're going to talk about change this month. This is a four-part series. This is part one about change. Today we're going to talk a little bit about why it's feared. Then we're going to talk about other aspects of change. Can a zebra change its spots? It's, um, oh, zebras don't have spots. Can it change its stripes? Can a leopard change its spots? Can a human do the same? Is it possible, in other words, for a human to become something they're not? That's the metaphor of all those spots and stripes. Can a human change themselves chemically? Is it possible that you yourself could change your own body to make it different than perhaps you were even born internally? How about the change of Gaia? What's going on there? All of these things will be discussed. But let's first talk about this, fear of change. If you take a look at the reality of change, most people don't like it. And that is an odd thing because quite often change means improvement. Sometimes, if not at least half the time, Changes are in upward motion because of what you have learned. And then that creates maturity. And the maturity creates the change of good things. If you look at someone's life over a period of time, they often change and change, climbing what you would call a social ladder, becoming more abundant. So you see change often as as actually practically a good thing, but there's still all this fear around it. Why would that be? The first thing we have discussed even today in the questions and answer is that there is an overall feeling of fear of change because most change seems to come from an authority of some kind, whether it's an authority figure, whether it's your government, whether it's those you work for, whether it's a cultural thing, and quite often those are negative. And so you become afraid of negative change, even though quite often it's not. But the fear of change comes right from the subconscious, as we've said before, and it comes from a feeling that you don't deserve something better. But you do. Dear ones, I could, I could tell you you have a superpower you didn't even know you had. Through the affirmations that we've given you, through the processes we've given you, you have the ability to reframe how you think about yourself. And this is probably the biggest reason why change is feared. You don't expect good things, dear ones. If you could expect better things for yourself and think to yourself, wow, when change comes, I am ready for it because it's going to be good for me. This or something better. And you might listen to me say that and say, well, that's all well and good to say, crying, but you don't live here. <laughs> and we've heard this before that your culture seems to beat you up and it's not conducive to you thinking joyful things or feeling better about yourself. You're right, it isn't. Therefore, there are ways for you to train yourself out of that which was given to you originally through your subconscious. That's actually going to be one of the channels we're giving this month. But there are other reasons as well. Sometimes the changes that you receive are profound. They're not changes that are subtle. 
Sometimes they're an awakening kind of a change where there is a sudden realization that things are different from anything you were ever told. You might think that an awakening kind of change would be good and received well. It often is filled with a time of adjustment and fear, apprehensiveness, emptiness. And here's why. The other reason the change is hard to receive. In this culture, it's common for parents to have the mythology of Santa Claus. And then as a child grows up, at some point in time, the child is told, well, that's not really Santa Claus, it's us. <laughs> and many times the child is taken aback and will go to its room and even cry because the, the mystery is taken away. The sleigh and the reindeer is gone and all of the magic disappears instantly. Now this is common in the culture, but you could even see the child's reaction is very similar to your reaction when you awaken to a grander truth that's not anything you were told. And part of the reason why this is so difficult is because those who gave you the original information were authority figures who you loved and trusted. And this is common with belief systems. Perhaps you're disenchanted with something you believed originally. And you're having a hard time switching that. But the more you look at it, the more you realize it's not what you were told. And then you go back and say, well, who told it to you? And you say, well, it's people you loved and people who, who you trusted. And then you say, well, if I change my mind on this, it's really a betrayal of my love for them. No, it isn't. Here's what I want to tell you. No matter what you were told, perhaps it was by those you trusted in your belief system, in your political system, in the parental system. Perhaps it was any of those who you loved and trusted. They were giving you the best they had. They were not tricking you. They gave you what they believed was true. And as you grow, as you mature, as you capture the essence of your own soul and your own wisdom, something starts to happen. The Akash of the human being starts to be activated if you allow it. When you start giving affirmations and say, dear spirit, tell me what it is I need to know, you're opening a door. It's a door of greater truth. And in that, your Akash, which is all the lifetimes you have lived, starts to activate and give you information that you really didn't have before. Here's the way things work. Here is a truth you are not given. Here is what you had learned in past life after past life as you grew up that is now available to you like a giant school that you've graduated from many times. And so much of it is in conflict with what you were told about you. This is sometimes difficult. The conflicting information again has a feeling that you were either tricked or something else. None of that is true, dear ones. It's you growing up. It's you receiving information about Santa Claus and moving through the emotions of that until you get to the bigger truth of compassion and kindness. This is why there is so much fear around change. Not just fear, but anxiety. I'll give you a mantra. I said it over and over. Dear spirit, I accept change because it'll be this or something better. 
Dear Spirit, help me to move through change, knowing that although things are not always correct in front of me as I plan them, they're going to something better. And the reason? Because I know I deserve that. How many of you feel comfortable saying those things out loud? I deserve this or something better. Because I am a child of the Creator, a child of God, God inside, and I am in the right place at the right time on the planet for change, for the shift that is here, for compassionate change of consciousness. You might even say, I am a lighthouse for others. I am the teacher, you might say. And therefore, the change in my life is positive. I expect it. Bring it on. How does that sound? Can you do that? Why don't you give it a try, dear ones? Because I, as Cryon, know where this planet is headed. It's headed with that giant snowball rolling down that hill I've discussed before with you that cannot be stopped into a, co to a far more compassionate world. And you are part of it. Expect good changes in your life. And so it is. Hi, everyone. The short cry and channeling you just enjoyed is from our weekly 90-minute healing program called Healing Wednesdays. Interested? I invite you to find out more at cryingmasters.com slash hw.